Hi, my name is Michael Roth, and this is Life of Worship. Um, what I want to do during this time is just really explore what a life of worship looks like before God and just going beyond the songs because we sing songs every Sunday to God, uh, but do we actually believe what they're saying? Um, and so I really want us to take those things to heart and live before our God in a very real and a very practical way. Uh, so one of the things that I've been going through over the last uh, few weeks has been coming back to the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was this place of incredible intimacy with the Lord where there was work that was happening, there was fun that was happening, there was conversation, there was deep intimate relationship that was happening. And what Jesus did when he died on the cross and then he rose again is he opened that door back up for us to have, every one of us to have that deep relationship with God. And so what I'm going through right now is I'm just wanting to ask a few questions and then make a few points um, on the different things that, that Jesus unlocked and that Jesus happened and how we can take full advantage of those things. And one of the things that I want to talk about is um, are we taking full advantage of trusting God in everything or are we questioning him? So Eden was a place of harmony and trust. So what made Adam and Eve fall away? Well, the enemy came in in the form of a serpent and said, did God really say? He planted a seed of doubt. And what he was saying is, did God really say that? Can God really be trusted? Is God holding something back from you? All these questions pertaining to God. Um, and my question is, is, do we do this in our lives? Do we sing something on a Sunday morning? Oh God, you are faithful. Oh God, you are good. And then when we go through our week, are we believing that God is faithful? Are we believing that God is good? In the midst of a trial, do we trust God can make all things work out for the good of who, those who believe in him? If we ask God for wisdom, will he give it to us? The list goes on and on. So my question is, is will we take God at, at his word or follow our own flesh? Part of going back to Eden is totally and completely trusting God in everything. Even in those places where we maybe can't hear his voice or we feel like he isn't speaking and he's just asking us to wait, can we trust God? Can we? Jesus proved that God loves us so much. He was willing to do whatever it took. He transformed himself and took on the form of a servant. He transformed himself and then died on the cross so that he could transform us back into the original plan. So do you think the enemy likes that? The enemy worked hard to get into the Eden, to get into Eden, so that he could confuse and, and bring division between us and God. And so now Jesus made a way for us to come back to Eden, come back to that deep, intimate relationship with God. And you think he's just gonna sit there and do nothing about it? Absolutely not. He's gonna tell lies. He's gonna say that God doesn't care, that God isn't faithful, that God isn't true. God can't be trusted. So why do you think the enemy tries to minimize anything that pertains to God or tries to make it seem boring? Like the Bible, reading the Bible. When you read the Bible in the presence of God, it is just like drinking out of the most pure water fountain you have ever tasted in your life. Going to church, he makes it seem boring, but that, that's a time where we're able to encourage each other and have the presence of God with everybody around. It, it's almost an experience of heaven where we're it, with the presence of God together. It is an amazing thing. He minimizes uh, a prayer. Prayer is our time with the Lord, our communion with God. And you know, if I'm honest, when I was a kid, I would fall asleep during prayer because it was something that the enemy was battling against my heart and my mind. And so these things, these things, God has opened the door for us to be able to commune with him. And the enemy is trying to take them away, saying, you can't trust God. He doesn't care. It's not worth your time. He, he knew that if we didn't trust God or didn't see our need from him, then the enemy can keep us from reaching our full potential. And as long as we don't trust God, we're just floating around. We're easy pickings for the enemy. So can we do this? So can we take God at his word? Can we actually believe what he says? That I'm going through a trial, but God said that he's going to work all things out for my good. So I trust him that he is going to do it. It doesn't make that trial any easier, but it can give us a joy, kind of like Paul and Silas. They were in prison, 
but they still were able to rejoice because they trusted God that God was going to do something good. So wherever you are at, just <laughs> put your heart, put your heart before the Lord and just say, God, this might be a hard, difficult situation that I'm in, but I trust you. We're coming back to Eden, people. We're coming back to that place of intimacy. And, and, and he has opened that door and, and one of those ma massive steps that we can take is just saying, yes, God, I trust you. Yes, God, I believe you. Whether I see it or not, whether I feel it or not, you are my God and you can be trusted. Adam and Eve lost Eden when they stopped trusting. We can walk in the garden with him, fully leaning on our Savior and our Father, worshiping him and trusting him alone. So my prayer is that we're all able to silence the enemy through the power of Christ and say yes to the Lord and to and say yes to trusting him in everything. So thank you for your time. And I pray that this just challenges you and you're able to just take it before him and struggle with it and wrestle with it and just say, God, God, increase my faith, increase my love for you, increase my trust in you. And that it just takes us all deeper together on this journey, deeper in love with him and deeper in trust with him. So thank you, and I just pray that God blesses your day.